Good morning, everybody. It is Heidi at Hen and Chick Studio, and this morning, Jamie and I are going to talk a little bit about the Stripology Rulers. Once again, the other night during our product showcase, we just mentioned the Stripology Rulers as we were talking about a few things, and we find that there is so much interest in knowing more about the Stripology Rulers and everything that goes with it that we thought we'd spend a little bit of time this morning talking about them. So first, we are going to do a little bit of a demo, but first I just want to talk about what the rulers are, okay? So there are three sizes of Stripology rulers. There is a mini, I don't have an order here, the squared, next biggest one, squared, and then we have the XL, okay? And that's the XL. And and with our ones wrapped, we're seeing the beautiful sunshine reflection oh, today. Oh, then I'll put so, it down a little bit, the glare, yeah, right? Yep. Okay, so the idea is, and let me get one that's unwrapped, and hopefully this, okay. Can we all see that, and Jamie can help hold, that there are um, slots? Like if I, if this, you know, I mean, there's lines in there, and oops, our table, I'm moving my table. Better watch on that. Um, so that, uh, that it won't, you can put a rotary cutter in the slot and, and that's how we're gonna cut, okay? So it is a ruler that you wanna lay flat. Um, maybe there's a lot of things about it, but it is also a non-slip um, mm -hmm. material on the back. So if you, when you see that kind of what looks like a shadow, um, that's got a non-slip, so it's to help um, it not move around. Um, so that really is a nice thing. Uh, the three rulers, they are expensive. I mean, we you know, I'm thinking general rulers, but they're 42 for the small one. That's the mini. Uh, 50, 56.99 for the squared, and 69.99 for the XL. And I will tell you, I learned to quilt with a needle, a thread, a pair of scissors, and a quarter inch mark because we hand, I hand pieced. Um, the first quilt. That's how my grandma um, taught me to quilt. So I grew up not using a lot of tools, right? Um, I, I could make quilts with very few things, pair of scissors, piece of cardboard, that kind of thing. So I definitely have a bias um, that when if I'm going to pay for a ruler and use a ruler, I want it to do a lot. I don't want it to be a one function although there are times when those are important, but um, I want it to have more than one function and I want it to really be helpful. And I also think, and this is like my, my soapbox of rulers and products, is that those rulers need to be supported with pattern ideas and you know all that kind of stuff. Well, these are all designed and supported by Gundren Erla, who I love. She is just a great person. We've done some fun interviews with her in the past, um, but she is exactly um, doing that. Uh, her own website has lots of videos um, about the Creative Grids rulers and products. So um, uh, let's see, I had here, it's like, for example, I just pulled one of the many books um, that she has and Oh my gosh, we've had we've had these couple of these quilts hanging in the store before. I'm going to grab this one right here. Some of you might remember that we had this in the store several years ago, and I've seen it made in several ways, um, different ways. We, we've actually got one of the projects in there um, that we're going to be doing soon as well, another project. But she has great books. She has patterns. Um, have you seen our farm? We've loved <laughs> farm girl strip down um, sample. Maybe we can put a link it's in. It's above. I'll use. I'll do a Goldie's oh, tip yes, with her it finger. It's up above there you Heidi's go. head. Uh, that's right. It is up there. This one is. And so that is an uh, individual pattern. So she has lots of individual patterns. That, that one's, one's farther down mm -hmm. the wall. And strip stacks. Strip stacks. Great and for table scrapping. runners. Not just. Um, not just uh, full size quilts. Full size or quilts or dress table runners or anything like that. She does a little bit of everything and. Uh, very much so uh, has like some patterns can make different sizes. I love how her books are are scrap um, oriented. Uh, in the interviews I've had with her before, she gets uh, Gundren gets really excited about how she organizes her fabric 
and uses these rulers to cut those strips so that um, she's ready to go when she wants to make a scrap. And coat. Heidi, let's remind her, if they're just joining us now, we are going to show using and cutting. It's yes, not exactly. just talking about That's it. That's right. So stay so tuned. In there. We're going to do a little bit of demo. I just wanted to kind of give you an overview. So if you don't know much about stripology rulers that you understand that when we dive into this, she also has other products like stickers. And I think you've got a yep. sticker on, on mm -hmm. this ruler. Uh, if you can see down there, because sometimes it's just nice to have um, little points uh, of understanding. So she does stickers, she does point trimmers. So if you're cutting a lot of strips but need certain shapes or sizes in smaller pieces, she does all that. We even have the bag that holds all of the rulers. And I didn't even pull out, there's also Creative Grid mats um, that can work well with these rulers as well as any other ruler for cutting that you can put the mat on the inside, the XL fits on the outside, squared here, mini here, point trimmers here, and you got this leftover space for other stuff um, that you might be taking along as well. So that is also another great product. So it really is an entire system. Um, and we get a lot of questions about, well, what if I only can buy one? Um, and we of course would tell you, Start with the big one because you, there's more than you can do um, than just uh, trim and stuff. But there are reasons, and we're going to show you some of that to to have all of them. And Heidi, now, you just refer to it like as a system, and it is like in itself. You could only do GE, but the yes, beautiful it, come in just a little just bit, a bit, so make sure we. The get. beautiful thing about it is that you can use it elsewhere. Yes, and you know what? You are a true quilter because you've come on air oh. with with <laughs> with fabric. So. There we go. I love yes. it. I love it. So yes, it's a whole system. Yeah. So it's it's good. Um, it's just a good thing to consider as you're working. Yeah. So what is one thing that we all cut? We all cut oh, binding yeah. strips. Yeah. And well, I think when we finish a project, yes. we have to cut binding strips. Before that, we have to cut our pens. But That's we right. need to cut but, our binding. But one comment that was made the other night during I think the product showcase, and I don't even remember who said it. Uh, you know, is that if all you did was buy this ruler to cut your binding strips, Yeah, you would love it. And we have to, you know, talk a little bit about, I mean, I've probably been the longest to hold out on all of these rulers just because I'm, I've been quilting for 40 some years and I, you know, I have my own ways of right. doing it. But Stephanie Unruh, uh, who works here on Tuesdays, she, as a professional, does long arm quilting and binding, binding mm -hmm. for her customers and and I think she was a little bit hesitant and now does nothing but right. but use the stripology yeah. rulers yeah because it's amazing it's, yes so should we do start yeah. with binding yeah okay. let's do that so I have here and I'm gonna watch and see bit. if um make sure that the sun isn't glaring and yeah. that they can see so I have my binding what I need for my binding on my um surprise surprise Iowa State quilt that I need to just do the binding on. So I have it cut already, and typically you use two and a half to two and a quarter inch strips, depending on which way you like to do it. But I'm simply taking, here's my fold, again, on the fabric, and here's my salvage edge. I'm gonna try to work backwards to see, so that maybe you can see it a little bit better. I'm taking my fold to my salvage edge. Okay, I'm not worried if this is exactly perfect you know I'm just trying to get it all in there because I'm gonna come back in here and zero it out like when you do construction um, you know you measure what is it measure twice cut once this kind of takes some of the guesswork out of things so now I'm coming back with my stripology ruler and so hang with me because I'm working upside down okay and I'm gonna line my fold with a straight line across the top. Can you see what I'm doing there? Also paying attention to this edge where my zero is because I, I wanna make sure I catch the edge of here, any little pieces to get a nice squared edge. Does that make sense? Can you see how I'm, I'll go a little bit more so you can see. Make it a little more dramatic. Yeah, yeah. can you see how now I'm looking to make sure I catch all of all, all the layers, edges, all right? So then I'm gonna come back in here and I'm gonna work on the 
from this side to that side. So actually, it's going to be a little tricky for me, but I'm going to come to the zero. So so Jamie's trying to do it backwards. So yeah, you would, would, you would put the rotary cutter, if we're trying to do it as if the film, because we can't without uh, multiple cameras here, yeah. um, you would actually put this, the rotary I'm on this side. Put it in here and go that way, but Jamie's going to do it I'm backwards. Go backwards just so, so you can that see where I'm going easier. And so there is literally a like a teardrop shape mm -hmm. on both ends. Yep, and you, where on you're putting every ruler. Yep, and on every ruler, so you can see like right there that you're literally putting your ruler in that teardrop space, and then you are um, uh, going in between those lines. Yep. So I'm working backwards on it. But so then when I need my binding, well, let's show them. Now let's keep going. Sorry. So when, if I'm going to do two and a half strips, binding, uh, whatever measurement I need. Now the cool thing with this, if you look down here at the bottom. And I have to adjust those. just a little bit, Jamie, because of yep. course we have a glare from the, the sunshine. No, the light above us. Oh. So I'm going to just try to get in here without that glare. Yep, it, it, that's about as good as I okay. can get at the moment. But yes, you're so, good. Every two and a half inches, if you see here, this is very well thought out of. If I don't want to do math, I just have to look for the symbol of the square. So I'm going to slice zero to get my squared up, then come to my two and a half, which is the square to 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 the square, all the way across. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I am going to flip it around to make show you how fast it can be. So there where I've squared up that edge. See how now I have that nice smooth edge right there. And I also just want to say, as you're talking about the numbers, like this, again, it's a system. Mm -hmm. So the star for the one and a half inch cuts, because that's what you would most likely be using this for, the smaller mini ruler for, it, it's all the same symbols. So you're not changing symbols from um, size to size. Okay. And I'm going to come back yep. just a little bit. So I've just reversed mine, and I'm going to come to the zero. Zero, two and a half, five, two and a half. I'm just going to the squares. I'm not adding this fast in my head. Notice when I come into the ruler, into the slot, I'm coming at a slight angle to get into the groove. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I stopped at 10. I'm not sure. So coming at a slight angle to get it in there. And I do want to make sure I'm cutting pretty... Um, perpendicular because if I slide it go you know I'm gonna start cutting my ruler but also um, not gonna keep the nice edge so slide in slide in okay so now I have one two three four five six seven strips cut that fast. Now, what I shouldn't have done is picked it all up because if you were a person, pretend, go backwards, that wanted to trim off your salvage at this point, you would just open your strips back up and you could do the same thing and come back horizontally, line up a straight edge here. Remember, I'm not going with the ruler on the mat. Yes. I'm going with this ruler right. on, the, we don't, grid on top of We here. don't need to worry about the lines on the mat. So the other night we flipped it over and we had some questions on why we flipped it over or if we needed to or we're, should we cut on the back side of it, blah, blah, blah. We don't need these. When we have this system here, we don't need these rulers. And it makes it so much more accurate. So same thing here. I could come back. Now use my lines. Come in here. Find where that salvage ends. Come back in. I'm going from the opposite side again, just so you can see, and trim off my salvage edges just that fast. And boom, I'm ready to go with my binding. See how fast that is? Time saver. That's just for binding. Um, obviously, the two and a half inch strips, I believe in a many, many pattern call for two to half, two and a half inch strips, straight two and a half inch strips. Right. So, uh, even the um, strip. The two and a half inch strips, the jelly rolls. Yes. Excuse me, I'm trying yep. to think of the you yep. know the name. The jelly rolls, those kinds of things. Uh, you could make your own jelly yeah. rolls. 
Uh, mm-hmm. So if some if a pattern calls, and many of her patterns will call for, you know, 24 strips, two and a half inch wide strips. Well, this is where Gundren talks about her mm-hmm. uh, cutting system is that when she buys a piece of fabric or has a piece of fabric left over, she simply starts to cut it into one and a half inch strips, two and a half inch strips, and she organizes them in um, colors yep. so that she can She's then, like if go. I want to do a red scrappy quilt, she you pulls them out. Reds. Yep, and the same thing too. Like, so think maybe this will help you think a little differently. We just had this discussion about pre-cuts. Um, jelly rolls can be a great asset. They're come all rolled up, ready for you in a coordinating um, collection. But sometimes there's a piece or two in there that you may not like. So this allows you to kind of create your own. Like, even if I want, like, let's take this collection. And that's Frankie. And say I didn't want these pieces and I didn't like it. I could leave those out, but still create my own jelly roll with the colors I wanted in it. So it just gives you another opportunity to do something really quick. And on your stash, when you don't know what to do, when you have something left, you could just- Cut two and a half inch strips. Half inch strips That's and you're right. ready to go. Okay, right. so that is one way. Binding, saving a ton of time, stripping anything, cutting it down. We're gonna take it a little step further now and we're gonna talk about how um, to use it in cutting a pattern, I believe. Is that what we're yes, doing? Yes, yes, I think, okay. yes. Move to your, okay. move to the fun, yes, so, there you go. Um, on our product showcase the other night, you saw we had this kit and we had another one that I had started out of the Project Create book. So this is not a GE design book, but showing you how you can take a very thoughtful, thought out tool and apply it to a different Different pattern. designer, yep. different book. And can I just tell you, the, the piecing together, when even if you're doing the strip sewing with your two and a half inch strips and cutting it down with this ruler, your piecing just goes together so much better. The neat thing in some of her patterns too is she tells you how to layer them so they're already ready to sew after you've sewn them together or sewn them, layer them to cut them down. And anyway, okay, so you had seen that we started um, panel parade the other day and some of the pieces that I had cut with that which was out of this book that was the pattern the other night you can refer back to that if you want to our product showcase but we also showed this new um, line that we have the country fresh and the pattern that we are going to be using for that one is this and using some a panel in it but I'm going to show you how quickly you can cut start to cut your pieces and in this case, I'm just gonna use one fat quarter. I could layer my fat quarters if I wanted to, but again, I'm just gonna use one fat quarter. I'll open it up here so you can see. There's my fat quarter. I'm gonna bring my cut edge down to my salvage edge. And then I'm, I'm gonna look at my patterns to see what I need. So I know on this particular one, I have my note written here so I can see it, that I need two and a half inch strips once again. So I'm gonna take my ruler, and Heidi, tell me if I need to move it forward a little bit. Do I need to come to nope, I think you're doing good, and okay. I'm gonna tilt the camera until I can't. So I'm gonna come here, just find my line, and again, I can layer more than one, pe- one fat quarter, but for the purposes of what we're doing now, I wanna get this a little bit straighter though. For the purposes of what we're doing now, I'm just gonna show you with one fat quarter. So I'm kind of paying attention to a couple things on this one. I'm also kind of looking to see how my lines are since it's um, one that has one. So I've got my fat quarter, it's lined up here and I'm gonna zero it out. And I know that I need to cut three, for now, I'm gonna cut three two and a half inch strips. So there's one, there's two, and there's three. At this moment now, I'm gonna slide this over. I'm gonna come back to that piece in a second. I'm gonna pick up my stripology ruler because I need, let's get rid of this so you can see what I've done. I need. And every once in a while, a little, (laughs) a spot or whatever. This is where having a fresh blade is. I think we could get a fresh blade around here somewhere. Um, is is really important because yep. if it does get a nick in it, um, it just that with any matter. kind of cutting. Yep. So I have my two and a half. Now I need to get eight and a half on this. So I'm going to lay this back down. 
Again, I'm looking for my cut edge that I already have because this becomes square now. I'm also looking for where the salvage edge ends so I can make sure I get that and the fat quarter where it's been cut at zero. And as Jamie is cutting kind of sideways, this is where it is great um, if you can walk around your table when you're cutting or if you have a rotating mat. Okay, I need an eight and a half. So I have cut my eight and a half. And Jamie, we're getting a couple great questions along yeah. the way. And I'm gonna answer this one first. Uh, uh, Chris is asking, do we need a special size rotary cutter for this ruler? No, you can use your 45 millimeter or your 60. Uh, both Jamie and I happen to like the 60. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she enjoys the ergonomic handle that you squeeze, yep. and I like the straight handle, um, this one, but we both happen to like the 60s. Yep. Uh, 45 works just fine. I would not recommend okay. a 28 no, millimeter because there's not enough space. Right, um, okay, so now I already have, just that quick, eight and a half, eight and a half and eight and a half and on this one and we must need a fresh blade on this one i'll have to switch to yours heidi <laughs> <laughs> okay again now remember how much faster i could be working if i wasn't talking to you but then on this strip i know i should have a four and a half approximately four and a half inch left okay same thing I'm, i picked it up because i'm trying to move which i wouldn't have done at home i would have just opened it like that but hopefully so you can kind of see what we're doing here. I'm going to lay it back down. And how wide is that strip at that it's, point? These are still at the two and a half. No, end. but the, I'm sorry, the width, the, you're, you need them to be four and a half, but you have extra, right? A little bit extra. Yep. So you could technically, you're going to technically zero it out on yep. the side. Zero it out on the side or so leave they're... it down so I didn't pick it up. Yep. And come in and go to four and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now you have so your four and a half. So now I have my four and a half. But let's keep going with that because I want to show you how fast I can get this cut. Again, we're, we want to take our time, but you can start to see how it can um, go relatively quickly. I'm going to slide over this way so I'm not oh, on the cut. Yep, the you're fine. I know you're right in the mat. Okay. <laughs> right where the mat. All right. So now here's my other part of the piece. And I still need, um, now I'm going to, I need a four and a half inch. I know what I need here, but I want to show you how I can do it. I need four and a half inch and some more two and a half by four and a half inch. Okay. And please say if you need me to explain something different yep. or if it's helping at all. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go four and a half. So I'm at the zero. I've already cut this line, picked it up though. So I'm just going to go zero again in case I shifted it. I'm going to come over to the four and a half. See where I'm at? happens to be a star on this one so there's four and a half and I'm going to do four and a half again so one two three four and a half nine also happens to be a star get rid of the piece I don't need turn my ruler and I need a four and a half inch square so i've cut my two four and a half inch strips here same thing i'm going to find my lines that i just cut because now i've made them straight lines so i can measure from there trying to not pick up my fabric and move it looking for the edge i have down here of course i like to use every as we all do try to be as conservative as we can with what we waste come in and go zero four and a half Okay, so let me show you that. Again, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pick it up at home each one of the times, but I want you to see what I'm doing. So now I have four very nice four and a half inch squares. Aren't those cows cute? I mean, so early in the morning. We got the cute little cows. Okay, so now I need some two and a half by four and a half inch. So the same thing, I could have left that down and not picked it up so that you could just keep cutting. I hope that makes sense. I probably should have done it the other way so that you can see how you don't have to lift it up. But I was wanting to show you what was happening at the same time. So because I have my four and a half inch strips, I don't need to do anything lining it up. I'm gonna go two and a half, two and a half, and 
that one should be about two and a half as well. And so now I have that many of my blocks pre-cut that fast, okay? Is it making sense? Is it helping to see? People are liking, okay. absolutely liking the detail. So you I bet. think um, one thing I, I should have probably done a little bit differently is, is not picked it up in between on these two so you could see that you could just keep cutting. But hopefully you can I think it's all good. There, I'm, you're getting lots of hearts. Okay. Everybody's all loving right. well, it. Well, thank so. you. So let's do one more because I need some big blocks on this one too. So I'm going to pull out a different one. And this one actually happens to have some hearts on it. Cute. Is it okay if we keep going and show you how to keep cutting it? I'll do just a couple more on this and then we'll go into showing you how to trim after you've sewn some pieces together, how it can use the trimmers. Uh, Ruth, you are asking who the quilt designer was and are you, uh, are we asking about the fabric, the country, the country fresh fabric? I'll just I'll say this this fabric, it's called Country Fresh, and I apologize that I don't know the name of the designer off the top of my head. I could find it, though, for you. It's all on our website. Um, and then the I'm pattern. I'm going to keep cutting. While you you're keep talking, cutting. Okay. You keep cutting. The pattern that uh, Jamie is currently working on is called out of the book Project Parade. Um, that is by Peace Tree Patterns. Again, that's on our website. And she is using that to make this project, which is called Fat, isn't it Fat Quarter Boxes? Boxes yep. from Fat Quarters. Boxes from Fat Quarters. And so we're using the Stripology ruler. Um, oh, uh, we held up a book. Um, that would that be that, book. that or the this strip, strip Stripology stash. book. I'll hold it this way. So on this one, you notice if you were paying attention here, I opened this one up. I cut. I needed three and a half by sixteen and a half. So I cut my three and a half, two inch, three and a half, or two, three and a half inch strips, opened it up because I need a total of 16 and a half, came back in here, gonna take my salvage edge, come over here to my 16 and a half and trim it off. Again, I was not moving my fabric as much, too much, so now I have my 16 and a half strips, inch strips, okay? So again, we just start to get this done pretty quickly. And the same thing on this one. Now, Heidi, turn my book upside down so I can't see Oh, my sorry. Patients. Sorry. <laughs> same thing on sorry. this one. I need, now I need a 10 and a half inch square. So this is where I just cut and picked it up. I'm going to come over to my 10 and a half. Slice it off. Pick it up. Get rid of that guy. I love, uh, uh, Kathy said these rulers are workhorses. And that, that is, is the true. truth. Yeah. That is the truth. I'm gonna zero it out and come to my 10 and a half. And just like that, look at there. I got my 10 and a half inch squares. Ta-da! Okay, so now I've already started. And you can see, I would layer this. I would put three fat quarters cuts comfortably. More than that, I feel like you start to get a shift in it. But I have three fat quarters or six layers. I feel like um, that cuts very nicely without having to push it or anything like that, especially if you have a nice new sharp blade. Um, so you can see on this particular one, I think I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 fat quarters. I, I've, already start, I've already got two cut into the pieces I need. So if I had layered them, you can see how fast that would start to go over the time of it. So any questions about this or is it helpful? Yes. And one of the questions that has come up before we go into trimming was what if you're cutting your bias, uh, excuse me, your binding strips on the bias? Can you still use the ruler? And can you still, um, you know, what what do you, is there something to do differently? And, and I'm going to say to Kate, and I know people are typing in questions, uh, newbie questions are welcomed. So do <laughs> hey, not ever hesitate. So if Kate, if you learn. have a newbie question, please ask that. Um, but uh, absolutely, the ruler, when you're talking about the bias, the rulers still have, much like a conventional, traditional ruler, we still have um, the diagonal, like a 45 degree and a 50, de uh, excuse me, a 45 and a 60 degree uh, lines here. And so you can um, use it to cut the bias and get your 45 degree angle on that edge. And then you just turn your strip 
your serpology ruler and start cutting your bias. So that would be another um, uh, demo we could do at some point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, Kate, her question, good question. Uh, are you misusing the lines of the green mat or just the ruler? And again, at this moment, we're just using the ruler. Mm -hmm. There are times when the lines on the mats are important um, for certain cuts and certain things, but um, in a lot of cases, in you- general, I'm, In general, I would say now about 95% of my cutting is done using the ruler, the ruler and with, not the mat. Um, this grid on this, not the mat grid. Yeah, great question. Great, great question. And guys, I'm gonna tell you too, as you start doing it, um, it's, it's one of those things you just got to jump in and kind of start and you'll learn as you go. Um, Heidi mentioned that she was kind of a holdout on it. I jumped in pretty quickly and started to learn. I wasn't sure about um, the cost of the large one. So I started with the mini one and I did some projects with that with in doing what Heidi is going to do in, in squaring up blocks to get a feel for it. And once I started learning, then it's like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yes, and it was the night that I had to cut 322 and a half inch squares for Goldie and Virginia because <laughs> yeah. they wanted some help that I truly became an addict. I, I will so. tell you too, Heidi is gonna tell you something else, but um, just be careful because one time, here's a funny, I was um, talking on the phone while I was doing it to my sister and I had to cut some blocks and I was just having so much fun. I cut my two and a half inch strips, picked it up, turned it, cut two and a half. I didn't need to do that. So now I have a hundred two and a half inch squares that are just beautiful. They're waiting for a project. I gotta find one for them. So always things to use them. And she noted before that um, we have the stickers on here. There are times that those stickers come in very handy to help you know where you're going, okay? Another thing I do want to point out if, as we're talking about this, if you can get it, Heidi, on these ones, if you're cutting, when you start squaring up, when Heidi's doing that with the smaller one, if you can see on there the white, mm -hmm. it creates a box, and those are at the half inch grid, and then on this side is black boxes, and so the squares, so you know when you're doing a 10 inch square or a 12 inch square, how to square them up with So that. think t-shirt quilts and oh, all yeah. sorts of things yep. you could. Yep. And, and um, uh, it's being asked, do we think we could use that ruler to cut things like leather? Sure, it can cut. The, it's just the, helping the, you. The ruler itself is right. Is so it'd be layers. If yeah. you were if you were cutting leather, I'm guessing again different kinds of leather, um, thin leather. You know, thinner leather probably is one layer. Or you know what I mean. You might be able to get two layers, but anyway, you could absolutely cut it. And uh, uh, C Cynthia said that she makes a lot of the yellow brick road quilts, mm -hmm. and this is one from Terry Atkinson. And this is why the ruler would be so good for that is and because any brick row table runner. It oh, took me like 10 yeah, because it's all strips. It's mm -hmm. all strips. You have to have a six and a half, three and a half, three and a half, three and a half. It's all strips. And it's that's where you don't have to stick to just Gundren, Erla, GE designs patterns. Yeah, um, it can work for others uh, to make lots of quilts. I did like want this. to show one more thing on this because somebody will certainly ask it because sometimes there are some limits to it as far as um, seven eighths inch. Like sometimes, you know, when you have the five eighths or some weird measurement that you need to cut, that is more difficult with this. But I do want to point out since um, if we can. And, and I can, you know, since are you gonna show these? Yeah, um, that one so, has, that one does have the eighth inch. Correct, so what she's talking about is there's some extra lines to the left of the zero. And um, I'm, it's trying to, there we go. It's trying to focus on you and behind oh. me. There we go. Three, but it's three eighths and an eighth right there. There we go. Yeah. And, and on that one, it has a little bit more, and we can show that in a minute, but on this one, the same thing, this one's quarter inches. So same thing here. Let's say I needed a two and a quarter inch strip, um, which is what some people like to use for binding or you need a two and a quarter inch. Do you see how I've skipped the, I would still zero my fabric out. So I've created the zero line. And then I would slide it over that zero line I created to the quarter inch or to the three quarter inch line. And then I would treat it the same. 
So if I need it two and three quarter inches, I come to the two and cut it because my extra is right there. Does mm -hmm. that help? So just, there's a lot of capabilities with it. Uh, Gundren has videos too, and some of the complex cutting that you can use the angles, you can do all sorts of things with these, but we are just simply talking about straight cutting. Mm -hmm. Now, angles, that and stuff right now. Cynthia, I want a little more information from you because at the moment, maybe it's just because it's Wednesday morning or something, but the, oh yeah, oh, never, never mind. I just answered my own question. <laughs> so the, the Y yellow brick road, you, I, I'm mean, going to apologize. This, this comments are scrolling and I'm Trying losing it, it, but um, losing them and it's not, but the yellow brick road, let me see if I can get it again. Oh, it's, it's crazy how the, this comments are scrolling on our phone. I'll have to answer it later, Cynthia. We'll come back. We'll come we'll back. Come back. And now um, if everybody wants to hang in there, I would know we, we, this is going a little bit even longer, I think than, yeah. than Jamie and I thought there's always so much information, but um, I'm going to come gonna around switch. to the front. And uh, show you. So I wanted to use the little mini ruler here to do some trimming using those lines that Jamie was talking about. And even on the small one, you can see the white lines and you can see the black lines. And so it's helping you know where um, where you can center things. Um, and again, uh, every pattern is different. I'm in the process of making a three yard quilt. Uh, that store sample that you will see soon, but it required that I make all sorts of triangle squares, but it did not make them, like the measurements weren't exact. It made that so you had to trim them, not by much, but I still had to trim them. And so uh, I'm gonna lay my square, my triangle square down here, and I don't okay, know, I, me... mine are all messed up at the moment. I don't know if this is one I've trimmed or not trimmed, so we'll see. But can you... Um, as I lay it down, I am, I, I, it has a center of the block, so I can certainly um, do that, but it has these diagonal lines coming out, and I want it to be three and a half inches. So I'm going to tweak it just a little as Oops, I, sorry. no, no, no. I'm trying to show as you. No. Nope. And so as I tweak it to make sure that that line is on the seam, I then can say three and a half goes all the way around. Do I have the right mind, amount of trim on all the sides? And I can tweak it just a little bit again. And this one might be one that I've trimmed, but the because uh, but I will say there wasn't much. I was literally shaving off the edges of these. But once I have that diagonal line going this way, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim on this side and this side. Then I'm going to pick it up, move it, and I'll trim again. Um and as I would say, the questions that you're coming in, again, we'll get back to them when the video is done. Heidi and I will uh, answering, but absolutely, you guys are asking wonderful questions. Keep asking them. That's how we all learn. Um, strip set sewing, absolutely, 100%. I cut my two and a half inch strips and sewed them together. I'm currently doing a project that is all of that. Um, and I just told Heidi the other day, I've hardly had to pin anything because my strips sew together so nicely. So did you see how she picked it up and um, and I just churned the ruler. I was looking to see if there was one that was more my um, they just weren't again they were so close but I feel like I have to go through every one of them to make sure that they are truly three and a half inches. Maybe this one is a little bit more. Okay, so now again I'm gonna line this. I'm starting by lining the center up where I think it should go. Yeah, this one's got a little little more. This one has not been trimmed. And this is where. They were so close to being exact, but obviously but not. But this is where that trimming and makes your piecing later oh, so it'll well. make the next step. So, so make sure that you see how she's putting that seam on the diagonal right here. Yes, yeah, so I'm lining that up. But she's also checking so to make sure that she can catch every corner yep. or edge. So I'm going to put it in. Somebody liked your tip of tilting the um, blade, just blade to... in, and it, you sort of have to. Okay, I'm going to go the other direction. Now, Heidi... Before you do that, oh, yeah. you need to pull your thing. So yes. you have your straight line. So now yes. she's, see that little bit? She's That's all I'm shaving off. But it to created make it. a straight line. Yep. And so now I'm going to, again, I'm, I've am i turned it. I know that it should be lining up with this line and this line on this side, as well as I have that line going down the middle. And then I'm going to come in and trim the little bit off the sides. And literally, I mean, that's all I'm trimming off is this little bit. But now my square is truly 
a nice square. Nice square. Makes a huge difference. So it'll make it. So that, this is where um, having the small ruler is nice because if you can imagine, if I was trying to take this block. Mm -hmm. And this and one doesn't go as that small. That doesn't even go that small. But if I was, let's just say even four and a half, I'm then having to move the whole block. And I think um, I started when I was making the Grand Central pattern, I started, I didn't have the mini at home and I was trying to do the trimming just like I did, but with this, that was exactly when I, the next day when I brought the mini home because it was like, yeah, not, not going to deal with the big ruler um, when I have the small one. So lots, I mean, we we're just touching the, the scratching the surface, if you want to say, of all the things that the stripology rulers um, come back in here for a second, Jamie, just so the two of us can oh, okay. kind of wrap this up. And then we'll, um, I guess I'd say, that's, we're, we're, we're the only we're ones here we're this the morning. Team. We're, the yeah, team. We're, we're the team this morning. The dream team. The, yes, the dream team. And when the dream team, what's that? There's a phrase. Okay, we're getting a little giddy now. Okay, so the, the point of doing all this this morning is we wanted to have more references for you to understand what the stripology and ruler how to is. And it. And utilize it. And utilize it. And I think it just shows that we could do more mm -hmm. um, demos so that people understand that. Um, each time we make a different quilt yeah. and, and that kind of thing. And so. if you know somebody that has a question with it, please, we're happy to show or help yeah. or share the video with them so that they can Absolutely. learn how to do it as well. Absolutely, anytime. And if you know somebody who likes uh, using the Stripology rulers, you know, still share this with them because there are so many different ways to use the rulers mm -hmm. that we can learn from yep. every time we do something. Yep. So lots of different yep. opportunities. Yep. And so if we didn't get a question answered that you've posted right now, we'll go back and work on that, getting it answered. If you still have a yes. further question, give us a call at the store. Absolutely. But yes, we have all of these products available. Yep. On our website, on well. our website and everything. So until the next time we talk. Maybe we inspired you. And we'll start cutting. Yes, that's right. And please be creative. Have a great day, everybody. <laughs>